channel. This week, I'm bringing you another Cook with G. But before we get started, please be sure to subscribe to my channel and give this video a thumbs up so that way we can keep on growing. Now, today we are cooking from Let's Make Dumplings by Hugh Amano and Sarah Beacon. Now, this cookbook is not like any other cookbook that I have had on this channel before because it is a comic book cookbook. I mean, how cool is that? The art is absolutely gorgeous. I also think conceptually it is just so cool to combine uh, comic books with the concept of cookbooks and cooking and learning how to cook because you get these beautiful, gorgeous illustrations teaching you how to make dumplings. I am hoping that they uh, are good enough for me to be able to follow them correctly because I have never made dumplings before. I mean, from looking through the whole cookbook, everything seems so detailed and so intentional and very useful. I feel like a lot of times with uh, this series, I get confused because I'm missing a word here or there, but every step has a photo or not a photo, has a drawing associated with it. So I think that'll be a really, a really nice asset uh, to this uh, video today. So I think it's time. Let's cook. Sesame chicken dumplings. Okay, this recipe sounded very good to me and I was curious to make it because it's actually from a section that they call their riffs, which is just their interpretation of dumplings, uh, kind of more modern twists or a combination of different flavors and cultures because the recipe book actually has um, dumplings from all over the world. A lot of, I think, actually it might be only Asia, but it's all different countries and all different representations uh, kind of piled up into this cookbook which I really appreciate and I thought it would be cool to do a recipe that was more from both of the authors perspective uh, however there are a bunch of traditional uh, recipes in here that I also want to tackle in the future so hopefully my dumpling skills uh, will grow over time and hopefully we have some tasty dumplings to show for ourselves today okay we're gonna start with making our filling so I just have some ground chicken and that's gonna go in a bowl with, oh, so, so, so many ingredients. This recipe was a great excuse to buy uh, almost an entirely new spice cabinet. <laughs> and I already have a lot of spices. Cumin, smoked paprika, cayenne, five spice powder, um, and then we're adding in some fish sauce and uh, rice vinegar and sesame oil and oh my goodness, just so, so many ingredients going into this. And I was, I don't know, I was excited by it because I just felt like I can't predict how this is gonna come out. Like I've had sesame dumplings before, but I'm excited to kind of see where all these flavors uh, land. It should be, it should be a fun time. So we also are putting in some basil, but they said to chop it up. Uh, that one's going in like that. And you know, gotta, gotta bring out the kitchen scissors. And then we're also adding in fennel. However, it needs to be ground. And I, in fact, could not find ground fennel. So I have it in this bag and I am just gonna do my best to legitimately smush it. Um, maybe I will bang it on like down, like smash it with my hand. I have absolutely no idea how to get this ground. If anyone knows where to get ground fennel, I don't even wanna think about how many grocery stores I tried going to to look for it. I just, I, I probably need more than one pestle. Maybe that would be a better solution. Um, I think I might just have to settle for, uh, you know, having some fennel kind of whole. Oh, this is working a little. I'm not sure if I've ever seen ground fennel, but this is not the first recipe where it has called just for ground fennel. I mean, I could get a spice grinder, but I'm always curious about spice grinders because like I have a coffee grinder. I'm not gonna put my spices in my coffee grinder because then my coffee is gonna taste like my spices, which could be good if it was like cinnamon or something. But the thing I'm curious is, is like for spice grinders, do you clean them? Like how do they work? Because are they gonna not taste like the last spice that you used. I think that's probably as good as we're gonna get. And uh, if you're new here, uh, anytime um, I, you know, do something in a recipe that maybe is a little questionable uh, in comparison to the instructions, that has no fault in my <laughs> my final assessment. Oh, 
Oh, fennel smells so good. Uh, if for some reason these taste like way too much like fennel, that is my fault. That is fully my fault. But we are gonna now add in, we're gonna add in uh, four green onions. Four? Four? Yes, four green onions. I wonder what they mean by that. Is this two? I'm gonna say, yeah, that's two, and I'm gonna use this. Maybe I'll do three to be sure, and we'll have like a nice in-between. We'll do like this. Okay, cool. So this also says to mince. You know that I'm bringing out these kitchen scissors, but let's get the ends cut out. What I like to do with the like uh, uh, ends that are like have stems on them, sometimes I'll put them in water and they actually uh, grow back. It's something that my mom told me and then uh, eventually I saw it all over Pinterest. It's, which might be where she originally found it. Uh, another thing that I thought was kind of cool about their cookbook, which I also think that they might have another comic book cookbook. So if anyone has heard of these authors before um, or has used any of their cookbooks, let me know um, if there's any other ones that I should pick up. But when I was reading the intro, you know, they did a whole like, kind of like history or like more information on uh, how dumplings kind of came about and stuff and one thing I thought was cool was how they went out of their way to kind of talk about how every culture has their own form of dumpling which I think was um was awesome because you know it could have been really easy to just focus on dumplings themselves and to just kind of share the recipes that are in the cookbook um based on those countries but they didn't really you know they, they went out of their way to kind of bring it and become like more of a global thing which I thought was kind of cool. So now we're gonna add in one chili. Uh, all I was able to really find was a Fresno uh, chili pepper. I wasn't positive how spicy it was, but I did try a seed and then touch my eye and it hurt. So I'm gonna go with, it should, it should be fine. So I just uh, chopped that up and now I'm gonna put in two cloves of garlic. So let's get that in there. First one. Doo -doo -doo. Okay, so now we're gonna grate um, our ginger over top. It says a one inch piece. So I just am kind of winging it. I did not get a measuring tape out. I'm just putting it right on top of my microplane. Did I say garlic? This is ginger. I don't know what I said, but uh, this is ginger. I also saw a hack that if you put your ginger in the freezer, that it will not only last longer and you can use it more in the future, but it can just be grated directly from frozen. The only thing you can't really use it for is like to slice, but I feel like that's most things from the freezer. You can't really just like, you know, like defrost it and expect it to be normal. Okay, and our last ingredient is actually going to just be an egg. Crack this egg straight in. Boop. And then they say to use the best tools you can have in the kitchen, which are your hands. And it says just to use your hands to mix vigorously till it starts to come together about 20 or 30 seconds. It says once it's mixed together, we're just gonna start kneading it almost like bread over itself. So we're just gonna go one and then the other. I'm assuming this is just kind of to help all the flavors kind of sink in together. Okay, and then it says to finish emulsifying it, we are going to pick it up. So actually pick up the whole thing and then uh, picking it up and slapping it back down into the bowl for another 30 seconds. Okay. So let's pick it up and then <laughs> again, another one that I'm just having a blast. I wonder what this technique really does. I mean, it says like you're making it, um, you're emulsifying it and it's becoming cohesive. Okay, so we have our mixture all together and now it says try the filling. You microwave a teaspoon of it for 20 to 30 seconds and taste it and then we can kind of like add salt as needed. Uh, and we actually can even freeze this filling as is if I don't happen to make all the dumplings today, which is kind of cool. And I saw that there's another thing where we can freeze the finished dumplings as well. So if you ever wanted to, you know, make a ton of dumplings, but you are one person like myself and you don't know what to do with all of them, just make them and put them in the freezer or put the filling in the freezer. So uh let's let's get this in the microwave and let's let's taste and see how we're doing so far which is funny a little a mid video taste test perhaps okay so we have our little microwave taste test it kind of just clumped up and cooked through it looks good to me i mean microwaved it oh it's hot that seems well seasoned to me i mean this is my first time making dumplings so we'll see but i feel like it's fine I'm just gonna proceed as usual. So let's move on to actually 
taking our dumpling wrappers and filling them, which this is a good time to know. I went to my local uh, Asian grocery store, my local H Mart, and I just picked up these pre-made uh, dumpling wrappers. They do say in the cookbook that this is a totally feasible option. Uh, it required a lot, a lot of steps in order to make your own dumpling wrappers. I'm not opposed to it. Uh, I just thought for this time, I want to get the actual like style of wrapping them down. And they even recommend saying like, you don't have to make them themselves, but the recipes are in here. So maybe a future video, maybe a, a, a another time I will try that. I'm curious if you ever made homemade dumpling wrappers yourself, but this is what I am using today. So we are now going to fill our dumplings. I have gone backwards in the cookbook to this pleated crescent style of wrapping your dumplings. They actually have a bunch of different ones like, uh, this one is the triangle four point star and they recommended doing the pleated crescent uh, crescent crest nut Have I been saying crest nut? Oh my goodness. Oh, these are oh, oh, I like the texture <laughs> The texture of these they're actually not as intimidating as like in like flimsy at all So they say to put two tablespoons of filling in each one. So we're gonna take our spoon two tablespoons does feel like a lot so I think I'm gonna just start with a blob and see how well I can I can kind of get it wrapped. Also, um, I am fully aware that all of my chopping skills have been extremely mediocre in this video. I feel like everything should be fine, more finely minced. So if anyone has any recommendations um, or classes, again, I think I've asked for this before, for uh, you know learning how to chop better or recommendations for knives as well. I feel like I also need um, I also need that for you know figuring out the best uh, types of tools in my kitchen. So lightly wet the entire rim of the dumpling wrapper with warm or with water using your pinky and keeping the other fingers dry. Oh, that's how you, okay. So push in the side, gather the dough using your thumb and middle finger. Okay. Then pinch the dough and seal together. Okay. Using the pinch and fold, okay. Oh, so I think we're going like, whoa, I feel like this is too much filling. That's definitely too much filling. Okay, okay, wait, wait, wait. Let's, let's take out some of the filling. We'll do a little bit of, a, I swear, oh, maybe it's a two teaspoons. I probably said two teaspoons. The first one is always the, not the prettiest. Okay, so then we pinch and fold again. Maybe you like, can like squeeze it out? No, 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 no. I mean, I'm getting there. Okay, this looks more like a shumai than a crescent dumpling, but we're gonna put our first, first attempt up in the corner. Okay, <laughs> let's see how many we can get through. Also, my plan was to, you know, make as many um, as I can, and uh, I can either freeze the filling, like I was saying, or I'm just gonna freeze any that I don't eat, which I'm pretty excited about, because I'm hoping if this goes well, I'll have all these dumpling recipes that I could just make and put in the freezer, which is awesome, because then I can have dumplings anytime that I want. So let's try doing a smaller amount in the center. I don't know if that's still too much. Pinch in on the side. I think you have to like pinch it up and then pinch again. But I feel like I'm going in a circle. Am I not supposed to be going, I'm supposed to be going in a half circle? Okay, I think I was getting it, but I think I'm still using too much filling. Okay, both of those are gonna be fascinating to cook. This is going um, very mid. You can see that uh, you know I have a bit of an array of styles down there. They're all cooked, they'll, they'll all cook fine, it'll be fine, but I think I have figured it out. Uh, however, I have not gotten the part where they look really nice. But it doesn't matter because, you know, this is about how it tastes and this is also, you know, a skill that I'm trying to, to learn. And we have a pleated crescent. However, it is not, you know, it's not, it's not a Miss America. It's not a, it's not gonna win any beauty contests, but it could, uh, it could come in first in taste, so. But as we've talked about on this channel before, it is not about looks. It is about what is on the inside. And in this case, it's the inside of a dumpling. And uh, consider we had a little taste test before. Uh, I think we'll be okay. I think, think, think these might be, uh, might still become winners, hopefully. Hi, this is G from the future, and I have been practicing my dumplings. I uh, literally turned the camera off, finished the video, and was like, wow, I am pooped, but I need to make all these dumplings. And so guess what? I just made the perfect 
pleated crest nut fold dumpling and I want to show you what I did. So I did the same thing as before, just put it, some of the filling in the middle and I'm lining it uh, with the water. But what I totally failed to miss last time, uh, so I just, you know, you squeeze it and you pinch. But I was like scrunching, but what I think you actually, well, let's see if I can get this. Yeah, this is gonna have to do. This this is me from the future, I, all of my other filming stuff's away. So, so you just, you pinch and you have to be more gentle about how you do it. And I, I think that that was what I was missing, was that where the, the actual like crest nut shape comes from, I was scrunching it and that's why my filling was coming out. So basically I'm just here to tell you that uh, if you ever try to make dumplings, uh, be gentle and don't, don't try and squeeze your dumplings too much. But I'm gonna go back to doing this uh, and I'm not sure what part of the video is gonna be in. So if this is at the end of the video, Thank you so much for sticking around. This is in the middle of the video. Um, I have no idea I recorded this, so just remember that when you keep watching. And again, as always, thank you so much for being here and I hope you have uh, a wonderful day. Okay, so we have all of our dumplings made, but I actually wanna pause and make a sesame soy dipping sauce. So that way we can try and um, fry some of these dumplings up and maybe, you know, have them all ready to dip in our sauce and give them a taste. So for this, uh, we need soy sauce, rice vinegar, water, uh, toasted sesame oil, and toasted sesame seeds, and then more ginger. So let's get going. So it actually made sense for me to just put all of the ingredients into a jar. So I did that. All that's left is to put my sesame seeds uh, into here. I only had uh, a mix of black and white, so the taste uh, isn't different. So I think it'll be fine. But I'm gonna add those in. Ooh, ooh, ooh. And the best part about making a sauce or dressing in a jar is you just shake it to mix. So again, this is soy sauce, rice vinegar, water, sesame seeds, and some ginger. And I just used the microplane again uh, and grated it, uh, and it was so easy. So now we have this awesome sauce, which also could totally be used for other things throughout the week, because this does make a lot of sauce. But I always feel like if you're gonna make sauce, you might as well just make the whole recipe or even double it. So that way you can have it um, on hand in your fridge. So let's put that to the side, and now let's take our dumplings that we have. I think this is a, enough of an array to kind of test them out. It's time to fry our dumplings. one of those types of things that like, it's a technique, it's a style, it's, you know, it requires practice and patience and, you know, making mistakes and doing it over and over again. But that's also the fun of Cook With G. I am here to learn and to, you know, make these mistakes with you. So that way, hopefully, uh, you are more ambitious in the kitchen and you're, you know, maybe making dumplings better than I am one day because I don't think that would be too hard to do. So definitely encourage you to try making dumplings at home. But let's, uh, let's give one of these uh, a taste. I did get like a nice crispy bottom on them. I'm gonna try it plain and then with our sesame ginger dipping sauce. They're still hot. That's pretty good. <laughs> All right, let's try it with the sauce. The sauce is good, I do like that. The ginger definitely comes through. I mean, it's pretty basic. I feel like it's a good dumpling sauce. Sesame, ginger, soy sauce, all the good stuff. I would not mind some garlic in there, um, but that's just my personal preference. They also said uh, sweet chili oil, oil, or not sweet chili oil, sweet chili sauce would also could go well with these dumplings. You know, they might not be the prettiest thing, but look at the crust that I got on these. I mean, that is, that is pretty nice. I'm definitely impressed with myself. I have a bunch of the filling left, so I'm gonna go back, kind of give myself some homework, practice a bunch of different uh, wrapping techniques. So I would say that our dumpling um, attempt was 
maybe maybe I got like a C plus. I think the flavor is great. But uh, and these ones also, I it looks burned. I'm gonna eat it anyways. But either way, I feel like it was really fun. Um, one of the best parts of making these videos is making mistakes because I feel like that's the only way that I'm gonna learn and only way I'm gonna be able to share with you with how we can all get better at cooking at home and exploring new foods and cuisines and things like that. But those were the only recipes that I have for today. So you got one dumpling, you got a couple different types of techniques, um, you got some awesome filling, you got uh, some dumpling dipping sauce, and you gotta hang out with me for however long this video ends up being. So I really hope you enjoyed yourself. Um, I always make sure to link the cookbook down below. If you don't know, I have an Amazon storefront, so if you're interested in getting it, I'll have that link, affiliate link, linked down below. It does support me uh, a little bit if you purchase it, but no pressure because I just appreciate of you being here uh, that means so much to me and if you haven't already please be sure to subscribe to my channel and give this video a thumbs up so that way you can keep on growing and I will be sure to catch you next time bye